Brothers and sisters, alhamdulillah, we have with us Surah Qalam. So many benefits, so many different points of wisdom. So, Yaqwati, this is a surah that uh, that contains the very early revelation to the Prophet وسلم, and commanding him to uh, to be of those people that are the most upright. The beautiful thing about the surah is that it is about akhlaq and character. And this surah deals with, first of all, about the upright character of Rasulullah and that the Prophet is not mad and that he is by Allah's blessings and mercy, he is upon the highest and exalted character. Then it moves on to talking about the the opposite of the character of the Prophet ﷺ, which is the character of the Quraysh. How their kufr and their disgraceful attitude towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger was exemplified in the way they behaved with each other. And how their mannerism, their behavior, their uh, attitudes, their habits were so poor. They used to swear about anything. They would uh, withhold their money when people wanted a little bit. They would not give their wealth to the poor and needy and orphans. Uh, they would not feed anyone. They would, they would be so bad, they wouldn't just insult in behind someone's back. They would actually insult in someone's face. So this is how the Quraysh were. Surah Al-Qalam uh, is a surah that was revealed uh, as some of the scholars have mentioned uh, in a narration from Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu mentioned by Al-Wahidi in his tafsir, uh, Surah Al-Qalam was the second surah to be revealed. Uh, the scholars are different as whether the whole surah was revealed in Makkah or not. Majority of the scholars say the first 18 verses or first 16 verses were revealed in Makkah and then the remaining of the verses, surah was revealed in Medina. Bismillah rahman rahim In the name of Allah, the most merciful to all creation, Ar Rahim, meaning specifically merciful to human beings. Noon, the strongest opinion, as Ibn Kathir rahimullah states, is that the words which are incomprehensible, like these letters, do not mean anything but the Quran. So you will find the very next uh, ayah right after it is something referring back to the Quran. Wal wa and I swear by the pen and that which writes down. Which pen? The pen which is the first pen that was that was created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that wrote down the Lawh al-Mahfuz. What is the Lawh al-Mahfuz? It is a book that is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that contains every single thing that will be there until the day of judgment. So the Quran is the uncreated word of Allah. It was written down even before the words were revealed for a particular situation. Ma anta bi ni'mati rabbika bi majnoon. You are not, O oh, Muhammad sallallahu by the blessings of your Lord. Be majnoon. You are not a madman by the blessings of your Lord, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is important because initially when Jibreel came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and hugged him in the, in the cave, he thought he was becoming mad. Isn't that right? Because he went to Khadija radiallahu anha and said, Zammiluni, Zammiluni, cover me up. I think I'm becoming mad. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, remember this surah was his very second surah. Allah says, no, you are not by the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a madman. And for you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is ajran, a huge reward, never ending. It means, meaning limitless. means never ending, meaning it continuously flows. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has a reward that is never ending. How does the Prophet have a reward never ending? Well, first of all, he guided us to Islam. So therefore, he is the first person to have started the Sunnah, which is all of the acts of Islam. So therefore, everyone who does whatever he does, the Prophet gets a reward. And because of the difficulty the Prophet will go through, he said in authentic narration on his deathbed, which was reported in, his, in the Sunnah of al-Bukhari, he said, Wallahi, I feel double the pain than anyone on this dunya. And verily, O Muhammad, you are upon exalted character. In one authentic narration, it is reported that Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha said that Rasulullah <coughs> never ever heard anyone from his family or his guests or anyone on the street asking him from anything except that he said, Labbaik, meaning, I hear you, I'm coming. He never ever said no to anyone. He went ahead and he did it straight away. Another characteristic that, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loved is Aisha radiallahu anha explained another authentic narration from her in Tabarani and others is that Aisha radiallahu anha said that Prophet sallallahu 
was always the one who gave back more whenever he was, whenever someone, someone did something good to him. On top of that, the Prophet ﷺ was always honorable to his guests. On top of that, he never ever wronged anyone if someone wronged him. He always did good back to them or he forgave them. In another authentic hadith, he said, Shall I not tell you that which is more rewarding in the eyes of Allah than fasting all day and praying all night in my masjid in itikaf? And the people said, Yes, Ya Rasulullah. He said, Have good manners. They will see, O Muhammad, and you will see. What will they see and we will see? When? On the day of judgment. Who amongst you is the one who has fitna? So the scholars of the sea said, On the day of judgment, O Muhammad, it will become clear who? Is it you? And at the time of death, it will become clear who is the one who is a real shaitan in this dunya? Is it you who is the shaitan lying against Allah? Or is it them? They are the ones who are shayateen that lie against Allah and, and, and stop everything good. Inna rabbaka hu a'lamu biman dalla an sabili. Inna rabbaka, verily your Lord, a'lamu, is most aware, is more knowledgeable. Biman dalla, as for the one who strays away. An sabilihi from his path. Wa huwa a'lamu bil muhtadeen. And he is most aware of the one who is most guided. So do not ever associate and attribute to yourselves piety, ikhwati. Allah knows who is pious, Allah knows who is righteous. You should doubt your own intention. فَلَا تُطِعْ الْمُكَذِّبِينَ Don't, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and O Muslimin, do not follow the liars. Mukaddibin, the liars are synonymous with kuffar. That's why you should never call someone a liar unless that person is actually is a kaddab. وَدُّوا لَوْ تُدْهِنُوا فَيُدْهِنُونَ They wish, O Muhammad, لَوْ If only تُدْهِنُوا if you were to leave the path for you the Hinun, so they would become easy on you. They wish that you would become soft and gentle in Islam so that they would become soft and gentle. They wish that you would mellow your message so that they would also mellow down in their in the hatred of you. What do they just wish they would lead that you would you could you would stop calling to this path? What do Lao to the Hinu? What does it mean? Therefore, means don't give them what they want. Don't you ever be easy on your deen. Take your deen seriously. Wala tuti' and do not follow. Kulla halafi mahin. Every single halaf. So halaf is someone who always swears. Wallahi, 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 billahi, tallahi. Do not be of those people who swear by Allah a lot. Because Allah is huge. Allah is great. Allah is magnificent. Only take the name of Allah and swear by Him on some very, very significant issues. Mahin means insignificant human being. So Allah considers every halaf to be insignificant. Meaning, if you are of those who are careless with your swearing, then Allah will consider you to be an insignificant human being. Then Allah says, Hamazim masha in binamin. Hamaz is the opposite of Lamaz. Lamaz is someone who swears at you behind someone's back. Hamaz, on the other hand, is someone who is haughty and proud enough to swear at you to your face. You're a fool, you know that? You're an idiot, you know that? Like a bully. Masha in binamin, the one who walks around spreading tales. So don't follow though every insignificant swearer, nor the one who scorns at your face, the bully, nor the one who is walks around by spreading tales. Manna ilil khayr stops the good from spreading. Mu'tadin athim, the one who transgresses, which is to spread, which is go beyond the boundaries. Okay, the one who transgresses the boundaries, athim, the sinful one. So do not follow every insignificant swearer or the one who scorns to your face or the one who walks around spreading tales or the one who stops every good from happening or the one who transgresses the limits or the ones who sins all the time. Just a few verses, Allah has condensed all of the injunctions of the bad akhlaq that people have, isn't it? Utullin, the guy who is very big. Imagine him and me who's really big and fat and tall. But his akhlaq is like a insignificant small human being. And that is what, what an utul is. Utullin ba'da dhalika zaneen. On top of that, he is zaneen, who he says he is from, but he is not from. Zaneen means, means the child of zina. Also, zaneen also means someone who attributes himself to someone, but he is not from that. Meaning that the Quraysh, they were big people, but the akhlaq were like insignificant mice. On top of that, they used to attribute themselves to people who they were not from. They said, we are the children of Ismail. Allah says, no, you're not the children of Ismail. Because the children of Ismail are like their father. Beautiful akhlaq, beautiful character. 
He does this, he behaves like this because Allah has given him wealth and children. That's why. He thinks he has wealth and children so he is loved by Allah or somehow he is of a higher status. إِذَا تُتْلَى عَلَيْهِ آيَاتُنَا قَالَ أَسَاطِيرُ الْأَوَّلِينَ إِذَا تُتْلَى عَلَيْهِ When my signs are being recited to him, which is the Qur'an, they say, قَالَ أَسَاطِيرُ الْأَوَّلِينَ Tales of the past, stories of the old. Give us something new, give us something modern. So what does Allah say? سَنَسِيمُهُ عَلَى الْخُرْطُومِ I will of a surety smash his face on the Day of Judgment. And there will be a brand, there will be a, a, a sign on his face. Saying that this guy is the one who is who behaved in this way. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about the story of the people of Yemen. Inna balawna hum kama balawna. We will test them just like we tested Ashab al Jannah. Jannah here means gardens. The scholars of Islam say that it is about five miles outside of Sana'a that used to belong to an old man who was a Muslim man, who was very righteous. He used to have a huge garden, and the garden used to have lots of crops and lots of uh, rivers uh, and lots of cattle in a huge garden from which he used to get harvest many times a year. And then he used to divide up the harvest between those people who were working on the, on the crops and the poor people in the town and the rest for his family. Then he passed away. When he passed away, the inheritance went to his, uh, his children. And when his children, when the inheritance went to the children, the children said, no, we can't give charity anymore. Id aqsamu, when they swore to themselves, la yasrimunnaha musbihin. Meaning they swore to each other, I swear what we're going to do is tomorrow, we're not going to give to the, the poor people, we're going to go musbihin, meaning very early for sabah, and go and cut off all the, the fruits from the trees, and we're going to gather them all for ourselves, not give any to the, to the poor at all. So they swore to themselves, they will go and they will do the harvest in the morning. Meaning, and they did not say inshallah. Another meaning of wala yastathnoon means, and they did not say, and we will give some to the poor. Meaning they intended in the heart, all the wealth will be for theirs, not for the poor. فَطَافَ عَلَيْهَا طَائِفٌ مِّن رَبِّكَ وَهُمْ نَائِمُونَ A punishment from Allah. Ta'if meaning something that floats around in the sky. What was the punishment? Allah sent a meteor from the sky and burnt up the whole of the garden. Allah burnt it down. وَهُمْ نَائِمُونَ Whilst they were asleep. فَأَصْبَحَتْ كَسَّرِيمٌ So it became like total ashes. فَتَنَادَ مُسْبِحِينَ So they woke up in the morning and they called each other مُسْبِحِينَ very early on. أَنِغْضُوا عَلَى حَرْثِكُمْ Let's go quickly and harvest. إِن كُنْتُمْ صَارِمِينَ Quick, quick brothers, where are you? All you brothers, come on, come on, let's go and harvest. If indeed we're going to harvest today or not. فَانْتَلَقُوا So they went. وَهُمْ يَتَخَافَتُونَ What does that mean? فَانْتَلَقُوا So they all went together. يَتَخَافَتُونَ means Quietly, quietly, not making a single sound, so that no one else in the village knows about it. Allah ya dukhulanna hal yawm alaykum miskin, and they told each other, "Don't let a single miskin person come to you today." If they went in the morning and they took all their harvest materials and goods with them, and they heard the sound, they'd wake up. Oh, where are they going? Harvest? Oh, quickly, quickly, we'll go with them. And so they didn't want that to happen, so they quietly. Wa ghada wa la hardin qadirin, and they went to their hard, meaning the harvest qadirin, meaning able, capable. Meaning they took all the tools with them already and, and, and bright and sharp in the morning to go and do the harvest. So when they saw, what did they see? They saw the gardens were all destroyed. They said to them, Oh no, we're destroyed. So they fell down on the ground. They grabbed their heads on their hands and they said, Oh no, we're destroyed. Rather, we are the ones who have been prevented from the khair. Right? And they started crying and weeping. So, qala awsatuhum, the best of them, said what? Qala awsatuhum, alam akul lakum, didn't I tell you, lawla tusabbihun? Why didn't you thank Allah and praise Allah for this? Qalu subhana rabbina, inna kunna zalimin. Just like everyone does. When the fitna strikes you, then you remember Allah. This is subhana rabbina, glory be to Allah, inna kunna zalimin. Verily, we were wrongdoers. فَأَقْبَلَ بَعْدُهُمْ عَلَى بَعْدِي يَتَلَّاوَمُونَ They turned towards each other instead of blaming themselves. Who did they blame? يَتَلَّاوَمُونَ Blaming each other. It's your fault. You, you maybe do it. No, you're the one who said it. They turned towards anger and they try to blame anyone else but themselves. قَالُوا يَا وَيْلَنَا إِنَّا كُنَّا طَاغِينَ They said, oh, woe to us. Verily, we are the ones who transgressed because they wanted to keep all their wealth to themselves, not give to the poor at all. 
Asa Rabbuna ayyubadilana khayran minha. It may be that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will change the situation to something better. Khayran minha, meaning better than this situation. Inna ila Rabbina ragibun. Verily, we are seeking Allah's favor. We turn towards Allah and we turn towards repentance. What did Allah say? Kadhalika al-adhaab. In the same way is the punishment of human beings. Meaning be very wary. If you misbehave, and you behave in this way, كَذَلِكَ الْعَذَابِ In the same way will the punishment of Allah touch you and meet you as well. If you behave in the same way with your wealth, in the same way will punishment touch you. وَلَا عَذَابُ الْآخِرَةِ أَكْبَرُ And know that if you think this punishment, this dunya is severe, then know that the punishment of the akhirah is akbar, is even greater. لَوْ كَانُوا يَعْلَمُونَ If only they knew. Allah Akbar. What a story, isn't it? إِنَّ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ جَنَّاتِ النَّعِيمِ So know, O people, verily for those muttaqeen, if you consider yourself muttaqeen, you should ask Allah for death right now. If you cannot ask Allah for death right now, then you know you're not a muttaqeen yet. But the reality is, no one can claim to be a muttaqeen. إِنَّ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ جَنَّاتِ النَّعِيمِ Verily, with the muttaqeen, with their Lord will be the blessed Jannah. Shall we deal with the mujrimin, those who are sinful transgressors like the muslimin? What is wrong with you? How do you judge? Do you have a book in which you are reading this? That it is written in that book for you is whatever you ask for, whatever treatment you're asking for, that book says that you will get it with Allah. أَمْ لَكُمْ أَيْمَانٌ عَلَيْنَا بَالِغَةٌ إِلَىٰ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ إِنَّ لَكُمْ لَمَا تَحْكُمُونَ Or is, do you have a promise that is binding upon us, that extends all the way till the day of judgment? إِنَّ لَكُمْ لَمَا تَحْكُمُونَ That for you is whatever you ask for. سَلْهُمْ أَيُّهُمْ بِذَٰلِكَ زَعِيمٌ Ask them on Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who amongst them will witness that they have some, some promise like this? That Allah will treat us however we want to be treated? أَمْ لَهُمْ شُرَكَاءَ Or do they have a partner? Meaning another God. فَلْيَأْتُوا بِشُرَكَائِهِمْ إِنْ كَانُوا صَادِقِينَ So let them come with this partner, this other God, if indeed they're truthful, that this God will give them whatever they ask for. يَوْمَ يُكْشَفُ عَنْ سَاقِ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that on that day when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reveal His shins to the people, وَيُدْعَوْنَ إِلَى السُّجُودِ And they will be asked to prostrate. فَلَا يَسْتَطِعُونَ they will not be able to prostrate on that day. Ya akhuti, number of points of benefit from this verse. Number one, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he has a shin. That does not mean that we should think, okay, his shin looks like our shin. As a result, their faces will be filled with fear. And disgrace will cover their, their bodies. وَقَدْ كَانُوا يُدْعَوْنَ إِلَى السُّجُودِ They used to be called to prostrate, meaning the adhan was given. They heard the adhan. وَهُمْ سَالِمُونَ Whilst they were able to, but they did not do so. And that is why the scholars of Islam, <coughs> Imam Ahmed rahimahullah says, anyone who misses one prayer intentionally, then he has become a disbeliever. فَذَرْنِي وَمَنْ يُكَذِّبُ بِهَادَ الْحَدِيثِ So leave me alone, Muhammad sallallahu with those people who disbelieve in this hadith. We will overtake them and punish them from where they never ever knew. And it will be recited to him, to, to him when that punishment comes. In, indeed, my plan is mateen, is very strong. It will be enacted and it will be, it will overtake all those people who do not listen to me. So what is wrong with them, O people? Are you asking them for some, for some ajar? Are you asking them for some money? فَهُمْ مِنْ مَغْرَمِينَ And because of the heaviness of the debt, فَهُمْ مُثْقَلُونَ They are unable to pay. Teaching Islam should be for free. You shouldn't be asking money for it. If, if you're asking for money, it must be for an explicit reason. أَمْ عِنْدَهُمُ الْغَيْبُ فَهُمْ يَكْتُبُونَ Or is there a, the knowledge of the unseen? So they know when they will die. So they will delay their acceptance of Islam until that point and become a good Muslim. So Allah says, finally, Fasbir. So be patient with them, O Muhammad. O Muslimin, be patient with the people you're doing da'wah to. Fasbir li hukmi rabbika. So be patient for the command of your Lord. Meaning, be patient for the point when Allah will make them a Muslimin. Because the command is up to Allah. Fasbir li hukmi rabbika. Wala takun. And do not be like. Like who? Ka sahib al 
like the companion of the whale. Who was the companion of the whale? Yunus alayhi salatu salam. إِذْ نَادَى وَهُوَ مَكْذُومُ When he called out in distress, what did he say? لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنْتَ سُبْحَانَكَ إِنِّي كُنْتُ مِنَ الظَّالِمِينَ So you must also say this, Ikhwati. Glory be to you, I was from the wrongdoers. لَوْ لَا أَن تَدَارَكَهُ نِعْمَةٌ مِنْ رَبِّهِ If it were not that the blessings from his Lord overtook him, his forgiveness. لَنُبِذَ بِالْعَرَى I would have caused the whale to eat him up and his corpse to be thrown out. بِالْعَرَى Naked. وَهُوَ مَذْمُومُ Whilst he was sinful. Meaning, had he not repented to Allah, and had he not persisted in his repentance, I would have left him in the belly of the whale in his time of distress until the day of judgment. فَجْتَبَاهُ رَبُّهُ So Allah chose him. Meaning because of his repentance, فَجَعَلَهُ مِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ And made him from the righteous ones. So what happened? So when he went back, his people realized that, that oh my God, Yunus was missing. That means Allah's punishment was about to come now. That's why the Prophet left. So they all accepted Islam. وَإِنْ يَكَادُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا And it is almost that those who disbelieve لَيُزْلِقُونَكَ بِأَبْصَارِهِمْ They are about to cause you to slip with their eyes because that's how much hatred they have in their eyes, right? لَيُزْلِقُونَكَ بِأَبْصَارِهِمْ لَمَّا سَمِعُ الذِّكْرَ When they hear the dhikr, which is the Qur'an وَيَقُولُونَ إِنَّهُ لَمَجْنُونَ And they say indeed he is a majnoon, he is a madman وَمَا هُوَ إِلَّا ذِكْرُ لِلْعَالَمِينَ It is nothing but a reminder for all of mankind all of creation.